the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. They came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great. He will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the household of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. The Word of the Lord. Now today is kind of an interesting feast day. Uh, a, a day that might be called a minor feast, certainly not recognized by all churches. But it is today, it is the feast of the parents of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And it's funny to think about celebrating and marking this day of the parents of the Blessed Virgin Mary when not only do they not appear anywhere in the Holy Scriptures, but there's no real record of them anywhere. All we have are some traditions handed down from the church. Uh, one tradition says that their names were Joachim and, and Anne. But really, the only thing we know about them is what we can infer from looking at Mary. And that's an interesting idea. I think about what it means to pass on something to ourselves, to future generations, in the sense that Lost to antiquity, any facts about our lives, the only thing that may be known from you and me is the mark that we've left in the people who come after us, in the lives that we touched. I think about my own grandmother, who... My grandmother, the strongest memories I have of her in terms of teaching me were to instill in me a sense of curiosity about the world, never wanting to stop wondering and learning and growing in the world. A sense that the world was so much bigger than me and that I had a and that I had a responsibility to to work hard to try to make the world a better place to look out for those that weren't being taken care of those were things that were dear to her heart and I think that I'm proud to say and I hope this is true that I think those are marks that are that are shown through me in my curiosity for the world and wanting to learn and grow and always wanting to to try to look for who's not being included and how we can work together to make the world a better place. I got that from her. And I think in the same way, we can probably look at Mary and reflect on what do we know about Joachim and Anne from what we know about Mary. When you hear Mary's story, we know that, we know that she's faithful. We know that she's brave, even in the face of uncertainty even in the face of what must have been a scary time that she was she held on to her faith to get her through trying times that happened when Gabriel came to her certainly happened to her when she saw her son Jesus on the cross she didn't lose her faith even then she was willing to humble herself and be a follower of her son and yet even then willing to speak truth to power. We saw that at the wedding at Cana when she stood up to Jesus. We see that even after his ascension she continued to remain faithful. That the stories go that she remained a faithful disciple for the rest of the days of her life. She was among those people who were in the upper room when Jesus appeared after his, after his resurrection. And, and she was among the disciples who were there at the, feast, at, the, at the moment of the Pentecost. So maybe, maybe we can get a sense of her strong sense of being faithful and true and hanging on to what was right, even in the face of adversity, even in the face of loss. Maybe that is something she got from her parents. And... That is something worth of celebrating. And, and if there's something we can take from this feast for ourselves, it's this idea that it's important. The stories that you pass on, the lessons that you pass on, whether that's to your own biological children or to other children around you, younger people in the church, younger co-workers or neighbors, you have an opportunity 
to leave a legacy in how you model behavior and belief toward them. So that someday, a generation from now, two generations from now, even after we are lost to antiquity, there'll be a piece of us left behind in those people. What kind of peace do you want that to be? Amen.